right, this video is created due to viewer demand. Now I have a small but, I would say stout following, and a few of you have requested a video targeting specifically the modifications I've made to both my AKs, my ZPAP and Arsenal 107. Now, uh, also, my most popular videos to date have been my AK-47 videos. It may surprise you, I'm actually an AR-15 guy. 26 years of rolling with an M4, you know, M16A2 in the Army, 19 years in Special Forces. And competitive shooting-wise, I've been shooting matches since about 2000, and I've been running an AR-15. So when looking at AK-47s, you know, I looked at it through the prism of how can I modify these basically to feel as close to an AR-15 as possible. Now, they won't ever be able to compete with a, you know, true race gun AR, uh, like this Fur Friends. You know, this has a comp, adjustable gas, and it being a Fur Friends rifle, it has a special bolt carrier, all of which design. So this gun has absolutely zero recoil. Uh, now, an AK-47 can never truly match a race AR, but uh, my goal was, you know, to get these to match a duty style or mil spec AR, kind of like the one which I have slightly out of focus uh, behind me on the table. So I think I have accomplished that. Both my ZPAP and my Arsenal uh, feel like mil spec style ARs when I'm shooting. And that's the goal I was looking for is to, you know, chop down the recoil pulse of these guns so I, can so I could compete against AR-15s in gun matches. Uh, there's nothing better than the feeling of going to a gun match and being able to crush a large percentage of the field uh, using AKs uh, going against guys running, you know, a ARs. Uh, no better feeling than that. But let's get into what I've done to these guns to get them competition ready. And let's begin with the buttstock. Now, the reason why I want to cover buttstocks, and normally most, you know, guys, when they talk about modifications, they say, all right, you got a rifle, go ahead and get an optic first. I actually disagree with that because if the gun is not set up for optimum efficiency, meaning the recoil management, the trigger, uh, then you're just practicing with a gun that's not going to yield you the best results, uh, even with an optic. So I'd rather get the gun shooting as smooth as possible and fit to me before I put on that optic. And a lot of times the optic is the most expensive part of the purchase when you're adding to a rifle. So let's get into it. Uh, check out the close-up view here. Now, both these guns sport Magpul stocks. Uh, the Zukov stock on the Yugo, uh, mainly because uh, it's readily available. And a folding stock, uh, you know, they have them for the Serbian pattern guns. Now, with the Arsenal, I went with a Magpul MOE stock, uh, mainly because, you know, my ZPAP is my all-around gun. The folding stock is good for you know tactical style training and competition and the moe stock i don't need a folding stock at all in competition and this thing runs about 70 bucks uh compared to the zukov which runs just on a hundred dollars so i saved my felt save myself a few dollars going with the moe on the 107. now i talked about optimum handling uh, that has to do mainly with the butt stock and that's a fitment you need the length of pull to match you regardless of the weapon system and you don't want it uh, too long where you have to croon your neck forward to get a good, you know, cheek to stock. And you don't want it too short where you're eating, you know, the rear sight area on an AR-15 or, you know, the takedown lever on an AK. And generally you'll see guys who run stocks that are too short. The gun will be, you know, excessively bouncing around on their shoulder. So to measure the proper length of pull, I use my forearm. And generally I like my butt stocks to be about an inch short of my bicep when I'm holding my you know rifle with the arm bent. Uh, that way, when I'm shouldering the rifle, I get a optimum length of pull where my head is right behind the optic and I can actually hold you know 90% of the rifle with my support arm. And I can literally just, if I needed to, feather the trigger uh, and not even have to use a pistol grip. And so I can totally torque in, pull in on the gun, I'm not up on the rear takedown pin or the receiver or eating the rear sights in an AR. This is the proper length of pull. So that's a key item, is finding the proper length of pull. Uh, the Zukov stock is set up the same way. I had to bring it out two clicks, but I had the exact same length of pull with the Zukov stock. 
The next part I've upgraded on both of these is I went with ALG triggers from Midway USA. They are both the ALG uh, EKT EL model. And honestly, the ZPAP didn't really need a trigger upgrade if I you know, wasn't shooting matches with the ZPAP. I would have left the stock trigger. But the Arsenal, the stock factory trigger in the Arsenal, completely dismal, long and gritty. Definitely need to be uh, replaced. So they both sport ALG triggers, again, for optimum efficiency. Now I'm going to jump to the front of the rifle to the muzzle brakes. Both these rifles sport aftermarket muzzle brakes. The ZPAP, I'm using a Circle 10, and it is their AK XS model, and it's only about $30 when they're in stock. And on my Arsenal 107, it is the VG6 Epsilon, which runs about $72, and I got it off of Midway USA. Now, both these brakes have the same traits in common, and that is they both cut recoil, and they're not excessively loud and gassy. Now, that's a trade-off that I accept with these muzzle brakes. There are better ones out there as far as muzzles, muzzle rise, but I, I don't want a muzzle brake that's so loud and gassy and obnoxious that when you're shooting with your buddies, nobody wants to be around you. So that is a little bit of trade-off, but you know, that's, you know, I expect that and I prepare for it with my training is they're not the flattest shooting muzzle brakes. They do a pretty good job, but the key is they're not excessively loud and gassy. Even with ARs, I don't like super loud and gassy brakes, no matter how much recoil they control. You know, I'll accept a little bit of, you know, give and take for, you know, just cutting out that loud and obsessive, you know, obnoxious giant muzzle blast like a howitzer. Now I'll move back towards the receiver of the gun. Both my rifles are sporting the Krebs Ambi safeties because I'm a lefty. And honestly, as a lefty, this is where you get ahead of your right-handed shooters because, you know, this just takes a thumb activation, similar to an AR, very fast as opposed to a righty who still, even if he has an extended paddle, has to manipulate it with their trigger finger and then put it on the trigger. Uh, as a lefty, you can manipulate it with your thumb at the same time, putting your trigger finger on the trigger. So it's very fast and very intuitive. It's just backwards from an AR. You have to swipe up with your thumb as opposed to slide down, but with practice, very intuitive. So that's a Kreb uh, Ambi selector, very fast, and I've got these both set super light. All right, let's talk about magazine paddles or magazine releases. Uh, now with the ZPAP, I mentioned it was extremely small, the factory one, so I replaced it with a RAM. If we check out the close-up camera, the RAM, very efficient, uh, very fast and smooth. And on my Arsenal 107, just to be different, and because RAMs were out of stock, I ordered the RAM uh, screw washer in the nut that replaces the stock pin, but I ordered a barrel Polish barrel magazine paddle. So it gives it a really unique look. I'll show it on the close-up cam down here. So this is actually a Polish barrel 556, you know, magazine release, but uh, works extremely well and it required almost no fitting. Literally, it was about four swipes of a flat file on the top inside of the magazine release, the part that engages with the tab on the magazine. Literally about four swipes with a flat file and it fits just perfect. So uh, again, I'm trying to get these as optimum as I can to go against ARs with a fast magazine release for reloads. Speaking of reloads, uh, one small item that I think is a necessity uh, that many traditionalists or purists are gonna disagree with, and that is bolt hold open magazines. Now for the ZPAP, I bought a ton of the polymer Zastava or Zastava mags. They all come with the bolt hold open. Uh, for the 107, I purchased a whole bunch of the Bulgarian polymer or plastic mags. They don't come with a bolt hold open follower, but I replaced them all with the X-Tech brand followers. So they're all bolt hold open. The reason why I think it's a necessity in a gun match, you know, you don't want to be bearing down on a target, go to break the shot, and it's an empty gun. You just get that death click. That's an instant, you know, three second reload one from that click when you realized you were empty. And in combat or a tactical scenario, I do not want to be in, a, you know, in the middle of a firefight, come around the corner, bump into an enemy, and again, I get that death click because I don't know my gun is empty. I'd rather have the gun blow back on empty with these you know 
bolt hold open followers and at least know my gun's empty, go into a reload, and the only extra step is you gotta charge the weapon. So I think these followers or bolt hold open magazines are a necessity for the modern AK. You know, I think companies still make the traditional style out of habit uh, for the purists and probably just to save money, to be honest. So I think that's a necessity with a modern AK. Now the next item I wanna cover, uh, which I mentioned again in previous videos, is to help control the recoil on both my ZPAP and Arsenal is these have KNS adjustable pistons in them. Uh, now this gun, I was able to dial it back 18 clicks with the adjustable piston and six clicks with my ZPAP. Now like changing up the magazine release, this is gonna require a permanent you know, alteration to your weapon and that is drilling a hole in the op rod so you can get to that drift pin, knock it out so you can unscrew the whole op rod itself and replace it. So if you don't want a hole in your op rod, KNS piston is not gonna be for you. But again, I'm all about performance. I'm not about looks. I'm not about keeping guns stock. All my guns are modified no matter what you know, firearm I purchase. I like to fit it to me and my needs. So uh, KNS adjustable pistons, I think they're definitely worth the money. They run around 145 bucks. Uh, this one, I get a lot of questions at, what is the correct one for the Z-Paps? And that model uh, I will post here because I don't remember it right off the bat. And KNS, uh, their model number for the Arsenal 107 is here. All right, real quick, I want to touch on uh, extended bolt handles. Now, I talked a lot about this in my previous video, Arsenal versus ZPAP. Uh, on the Arsenal 107, I have an extended bolt handle, and as you can see on the ZPAP, I do not. And the reason why is that has to do with the design of the curve in the back end of the ZPAP charging handle or bolt handle. This curve just does not allow extended bolt handles to stay on. Again, I've tried a lot of name brand ones and they all you know, fly off after two magazines. Also, the bulge trunnion does get in the way. Even I tried modifying the you know, bolt handles to fit around the bulge trunnion and it still doesn't work. Uh, now on this arsenal, I actually forget which brand of extended you know, charging handle or extended bolt handle uh, this is, but I would look at M13 Tromix, they're very good. Uh, this one has stayed on for you know, four or five magazines now, so I have a lot of hope in it. And the difference being, you can't see it, is the back end of Russian pattern and Bulgarian pattern charging handles. The front is curved and the back end is straight, and I think that's why this is locked on here and stayed on. So if you want a extended bolt handle and you want a ZPAP, I don't think it's gonna work out. But really, this is, out of all the modifications, extended bolt handle is really the last thing. Uh, I can get used to a normal one. It's kind of cool that this one stayed on, but it's not a necessity uh, like these other items. Now, lastly, before I cover, you know, getting into the optic and the optic mount, let's talk about pistol grips real quick. I just went with Magpul, the MOE style. It's the closest thing to an AR-15, uh, just to match an AR-15 type grip. Now, the four ends, this is running a Troy old school one, which I got online at, I think, a pretty good deal. And really, I just wanted a hand guard so I could mount AFGs to, again, get them to match the feeling of an AR. Uh, now, on the ZPAP, I went with TDI arms. They make Yugo pattern ones. It required a tiny bit of filing. There's two legs on the inside of the TDI arms one. They're, you know, lock into the lower receiver. It took a few passes of the file to get it fit, but it's super snug. And again, the primary goal is to be able to mount this AFG and get that AR style grip. If we compare that to, say, uh, my fur friend's rifle, I wanted, you know, the same feeling. Now on my Zastava, I put the Zastava brand cheese grater, uh, mainly just for looks. It fits super tight. Uh, I actually had to do a little bit of filing underneath the front end to get it to work with the TDI, but it was minor fitting that you know any you know shooter can do. Uh, so super tight lockup between the TDI arms and the Zastava brand cheese grater. The last item, or next to last item, and probably the one I get the most questions on in all my videos is what optic mount I'm running. I love the optic mounts from Achero Arms, specifically the Bravo mount. I have a you know primary arms micro dot on my 107 with an Achero Arms Bravo mount, and of course, a, the lower version or cheaper model 
of the Primary Arms Micro Dot Gen 2. Uh, this thing has taken a beating, works flawlessly. Again, with an Atero Arms Bravo mount. I actually have two more Atero Arms mounts. Uh, one is for this Burris Fast Fire 2, and then just their standard Picatinny mount. And I'll put them here in the close-up camera. Uh, these mounts have held zero perfectly. I've got 2,000 rounds on the ZPAP, and it's held zero. And more importantly, they do have a backup iron sight leaf blade in front of the optic that you can zero off your front sight. So you do still have a you know rear sight on your AK. So, and they run, they're just under $100. So I think for the money, if you don't plan on moving optics around, I think they are the best optic mount for an AK. Uh, and taking out the rear sight, really, it just pops right, right out. It's not that big of a deal. You can always replace it uh, and put it back to stock configuration. And these primary arms micro dots, I think for the money, they are the best red dots out there. I own a you know, Aimpoint T1. And honestly, I'll probably never buy an Aimpoint ever again, as I've said before, because, you know, at 180 bucks for the higher end primary arms micro dot with the push button, uh, you know, you can't go wrong. All right, so that's the modifications I've made to my, you know, ZPAP and Arsenal 107. Hopefully you found this video helpful. Hopefully I wasn't too long-winded in my explanations of what I've done to these guns. Again, my goal was to get these, you know, 762 by 39 rifles to feel like I'm shooting 5.56, and I think I've succeeded. I've enjoyed modding things up, and uh, they run pretty well. Now, if you like this video, please like it and share it and help me break into the YouTube algorithms. Right now, I'm nowhere uh, besides, you know, my dedicated small following of you guys that share this video with your buddies. So please continue to share it. Stay tuned for future content. As always, I'm Jeff Gerwich. Thanks for watching.